Today I'm taking this kayak and Brittany out in this bay to look for a sunken plane. What is up guys? My name is Shane Danger. Now this plane apparently sunk here in the 40s sometime around World War II and it has a crazy story about how it got there. So we're gonna go out and look for it, try to find it, see if we can find it, show it to you guys and then I'll tell you the story while we're out diving it. So if you're interested in history, World War II or just going out and diving and finding crazy stuff, I think you're gonna love this video. So let's go get out there. Brittany, hop in the yak. We're gonna go find it. So now go all on the right side. <laughs> There's like a giant propeller right here. Wait, really? Yeah. Oh man, we gotta get in. <laughs> well, I'm already in, you gotta get in. Oh, okay. Okay, Britt, where is it? What do you mean? It's right there. Right where? So the day that we went out actually had like the best weather I have probably ever had in this bay, especially on a day when I'm going out with a kayak because you can't always know how it's going to be. And so you can't always just have a kayak ready, you know? And so we saw it from our house and knew it was going to be a really special day. So we headed out and I think considering how rare it is to have weather like this and the fact that I'm just really good at taking underwater video and photos, I think that we have the best photos and videos that have ever been taken of this plane wreck. So that's really cool to get out there and get some really good documentation of the wreck and its current state because it's obviously getting more and more overgrown by coral and algae as the years go on. And I'm sure eventually you won't even be able to see any of the plane wreck. It'll just be a pile of coral reef. So I wanted to tell you guys about the history of this wreck. I've heard a couple different stories, but I'm basically just going to read verbatim what I'm finding on this website and I'll link all the websites that I use down in the description below. So if you want to read their full accounts, go ahead and do so. So this is a quote from Hui Va'a. The story behind the wreck is this. One fine day in 1947, an unknown airman was taking off from the new, added in 1943, bomber runway at Bellows Airfield in Waimanalo on a routine training flight in a P-47 Thunderbolt when the engine completely conked out. A short glide and the plane hit the shallow reef offshore, skidding along on the coral until it came to a halt about 800 yards from the end of the runway. Perched on the edge of the reef in about three feet of water, the landing gear was sheared off, the propeller mangled, and the engine full of seawater. But the pilot was allegedly unharmed, perhaps only worried about how this was all going to look on his flight resume. He could and probably did walk back to the airstrip. The next day, the Army declared the plane a write-off, removed the armaments and electronics, and left the carcass to the elements. The wreck, I am told, was still visible from Lanikai until the mid-70s when a particularly nasty storm moved it into slightly deeper water off the edge of the reef, breaking it into pieces as it did so. And there it stays, just waiting for you. Now, another story that that I read completely skips the mid 70s part and basically just says that the plane fell to pieces when it crashed, which to me makes a lot more sense because if a plane was going the speed that is required to take off at, which is about 100 miles an hour, it would definitely be ripped apart when it hit the water. Another story that I couldn't find anything in writing about, but I heard from a friend who grew up right near where this plane wreck is, said that he heard that the pilot was drunk and that was why it crashed. So I'm not sure if it was a pilot error or if the plane was messed up, which is what some of these articles I'm reading have said. So it's hard to say exactly why it crashed, but fact of the matter is it crashed back in 1947 and has remained in the ocean since then. Another account that I found had a little bit more detailed information and actually knew who the pilot was. It reads as follows. On June 21, 1944, which by the way, disagrees with the first 
first article that I read. First Lieutenant William Sparks took off in his P-47 Thunderbolt from Bellows Airfield at 3.33 p.m., only to experience immediate engine failure and the famously heavy fighter bomber nicknamed the Jug, which would force the young officer to crash land some 1,000 yards offshore in the shallow reef off the coast of Oahu. According to excellent research conducted and recorded in A World War II Underwater Plane Wreck, The History of a P-47 by Whitney Petrie, First Lieutenant Sparks was uninjured in the crash and was able to walk and swim back to base. Incredibly, Petrie goes on to detail a second crash involving Officer Sparks, where on March 4th, 1944, only a mere three and a half months prior to the ocean crash, the young pilot collided in mid-air with 2nd Lieutenant Lloyd R. Millett at 6.12 p.m. over Oahu. Millett bailed out and sustained minor injuries. Sparks crash landed without injury. What's more, the very same P-47 Sparks crash landed on June 21st in the reef off the windward side of Oahu had previously crashed at a municipal airport in New Mexico. Some plane, some pilot. So it sounds like either this guy was the luckiest pilot or the unluckiest pilot ever. And it's crazy to think that you could just be up there crashing planes and surviving from it multiple times because in my mind when the plane crashes everybody dies it really is a treat for us though that they left it here because there's something that's just so cool about something man-made being left in the ocean and then being reclaimed by the living organisms in the ocean now i'm obviously not advocating for military stuff to be just left in the ocean because they don't feel like cleaning up their garbage but here and there i feel like it's pretty cool i'm not going to pretend that this plane is a complete secret i was able to find several articles online that tell you exactly how to get there. So I'm just going to say that if you ever do decide to try to go out to find it, it's very important that you do as much as you can to respect the plane and not damage it during your visit. The worst thing that you could do would probably be to anchor onto the plane because there are usually about three foot waves in this area, which could definitely damage the plane if something was anchored to it. We happened to go on one of the most perfect days that I've ever seen here. So we were able to anchor our kayak just by tying the kayak off to a weight belt and leaving it in the sand. The reef in this area has been severely damaged by the amount of tourists that come here because of their skin oils and sunscreen. So it's important that we do everything that we can to protect it by only wearing mineral sunscreen and not touching or attaching anything to the coral reef. Okay, we just paused to take a video in this spot because it is like so perfectly beautiful. Oh my goodness, we're casting a shadow onto the reef right there. Looks like we're just floating on nothing. That's Shane's favorite thing. About yeah, the yeah, now. yeah. So uh, we need to come right to this exact spot with the clear kayak to take our photo. That'll be so sick. But yeah, that's just, that's a freaking view right there. Get out of the way, Brittany. Oh no. <laughs> So thanks for watching and smash subscribe if you enjoyed this video. We'll be back again later with another crazy adventure here in Hawaii exploring with our kayak now that we have it. Let's okay, go. that's all the stuff we saw, bye. Wow, what a day for it. There are other people at this beach. I'm just not gonna show them. Wow, it even looks so nice right here, what the heck? All what I wanted to do is take a lot of the picture in the water. All right, let's do it. Okay. Wow, what? It looks like Tahiti. Are you kidding? Oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah, that's the angle right there for sure. Okay.